Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Harris and in this video we'll talk about a topic which has many myths linked to it and that is tooth eruption. Now tooth eruption is defined as a developmental process which is responsible for moving the tooth from its developmental position inside the jaws to its functional position of occlusion inside the oral cavity. Now whenever we define tooth eruption, it is important to mention final or functional position of occlusion because even if the tooth erupts inside the oral cavity, but if it does not make contact with its opposing tooth, it is said to be incompletely erupted. Now the human dentition has two sets of teeth. The first is the primary and the second is the permanent teeth. Now, the primary teeth are replaced by the permanent teeth and those permanent teeth which replace the primary teeth are known as the succedaneous teeth. So the primary incisors will be replaced by the permanent incisors, the primary canines will be replaced by the permanent canines, the primary molars however will be replaced by the permanent premolars. Okay. The primary dentition does not have premolars. Secondly, the permanent molars are not succedaneous teeth as they're not replacing any primary tooth. Now, tooth eruption is a very dynamic phenomena and it is divided in three phases. The first phase is the pre-eruptive tooth movement phase. In this phase, the movements are made within the jaws before the tooth actually begins to erupt. So this is an entirely intraosseous phase. All the movements are made inside and within the confines of the jaws. Now in this phase, the permanent premolars occupy a position that is exactly between the diverging roots of the primary first and second molars. Okay? Secondly, the permanent incisors and canines occupy a position that is lingual to the permanent incisors and canines. And a very unique feature about the mandibular permanent first molars is that they actually develop while they're mesially inclined within the jaw. And in the course of eruption, they hit the root of the second primary molar, straighten themselves up, and then they erupt inside the oral cavity. Therefore, the primary teeth are very important for the proper eruption of the permanent teeth because they guide the eruption. And we should make every effort to preserve and retain the primary teeth in the clinics. Even if the crown cannot be retained, every effort should be made to retain the roots of the primary teeth. Now we move on to the second phase which is the eruptive tooth movement phase. Now, in this phase, the developing tooth, the erupting tooth, moves from its position inside the jaw to the functional position of occlusion inside the oral cavity. Now, the movements that are made in this phase are very crucial. This phase comprises of both intraosseous and extraosseous movements, and in this phase, the root formation begins. And as soon as the root formation begins, the formation of the periodontal ligament also begins. Now it's important to mention here that the periodontal ligament compose, is composed of many fiber bundles, which are synthesized and destroyed by the fibroblasts. The fibroblasts in the periodontal ligament are very unique. Now they are linked to adjacent fibroblasts with cellular junctions and they have a unique contractile property. Now when many fibroblasts simultaneously contract, they exert a contractile push to the erupting tooth to move towards the oral cavity in an axial direction. Secondly, every erupting tooth passes through a small canal which is known as the gubernacular canal. Now this canal is inside the bone and it consists of remnants of dental lamina 
and it also has a small strand of fibrous tissue, which is known as the gubernacular cord. Now, as the tooth erupts, the canal widens to accommodate the size of the tooth. Now, the next phase is the post-eruptive tooth movement phase. Now, this phase is responsible for maintaining the functional position of occlusion of the erupted tooth. Now, after a tooth has erupted, the jaw growth is still continuing. Okay, let me give you an example. The permanent incisors develop uh, erupt in the age of seven or eight. However, the jaws continue to grow till the age of 13 to 50. So the post eruptive tooth movement accommodates the growth of the jaws. Secondly, it also accommodates the completion of root formation. Now when the tooth erupts, only two thirds of its root is formed. One third is formed after eruption. And when the root formation completes, the tooth length increases. Therefore, a small amount of eruptive movement is done. The eruption is, the eruptive movement is also uh, taking place when there is continued deposition of cementum around the root apex. Now we've talked about the phases of tooth eruption. Now we'll come on to the different mechanisms. Many theories were presented to explain the phenomena of tooth eruption. However, most of them were rejected. The first theory was the hydrostatic pressure theory. And this theory stated that the blood rushing inside the vessels which supply the developing tooth exert a mechanical force which causes the tooth to erupt. Now this theory was rejected because the drugs which reduced the blood pressure, they did not cause tooth eruption to stop. So this theory was rejected. The second theory was the root formation theory. And uh, this theory was quite understandable and logical because when the root formation uh, would take place, the root length and the tooth length would increase and this would cause a push to the tooth to erupt to the oral cavity. However, this was also rejected. And to the amazement of the people listening to this video, rootless tooth also managed to erupt. Now this is quite uh, astonishing, but they did. And secondly, some teeth manage to erupt a distance greater than their root length. So this theory was also rejected. The third theory is the periodontal ligament theory. Now, this theory argued that the actions of the fibroblasts and collagen remodeling forces the tooth out to in the oral cavity. Now, this theory is very important. However, it's important for us to consider that periodontal ligament is not the sole mediator of tooth eruption. Because during experiments, when those drugs were used which stopped the formation and synthesis of collagen, the tooth eruption was not hindered. So this theory was also rejected. Now, the theory which was accepted and that uh, managed to explain the phenomenon of tooth eruption was the dental follicle theory. Now, let's move towards the tooth development. The dental follicle is basically fibrocellular tissue which is surrounding a developing tooth, okay? Now, during microsurgical studies, when the dental follicle was removed, the tooth failed to erupt, okay? There was no eruption without the dental follicle. Now, when another microsurgical study was performed in which the dental follicle was intact, but the tooth was replaced by a metallic replica, the metallic replica managed to erupt. So it's clear that dental follicle is essential for tooth eruption. Now, research has shown that the interaction between the reduced enamel epithelium and the dental follicle causes tooth eruption. The coronal half of the dental follicle makes colonostimulating stimulating factor one, which promotes osteoclast differentiation and causes tooth eruption, sorry, which causes bone resorption, and this leads to tooth eruption. However, the epical half of the dental follicle was shown to secrete bone morphogenetic proteins. And these proteins promote bone formation. So bone formation at the base and bone resorption at the uh, <clears throat> apex, at the upper level, created a pathway 
for tooth to erupt. So the osteoclasts basically delineate an eruptive pathway for the tooth. So finally, the dental follicle theory came up and it explained the phenomena of tooth eruption. This chart represents the times, the different times at which the different teeth erupt. So this was all about tooth eruption. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give a like, give a thumbs up. Have, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. This is Dr. Harish Shakil. Thank you very much.